I am at a crossroads when it comes to one of the greatest cars I have ever owned. From the moment I saw it, I knew it had to be mine. That first drive home, the smell, the sound, the power, the excitement of just standing there, poring over every little detail and familiarizing yourself with something so different, something fresh and new. We are usually so enamored, in fact, that we haven't even begun to notice the faults, idiosyncrasies and complications that exist right in front of us. It might be an interior rattle, an engine misfire, a slippery clutch, or even a rat's nest of wiring, leading to a hidden surprise that changes everything. So what, you say? Things can be fixed, and indeed, that's true. But it comes at a cost, whether it be your time or your wallet. In most cases, and with this car in particular, it ends up being both. And yet, after all this time, I still haven't got there. Most recently, I have spent hundreds of dollars trying to diagnose a tail shaft vibration. So severe that it has stopped me from being able to enjoy the car at all. It's been removed, inspected, rebuilt, balanced and inspected again by multiple people. And yet, the issue still remains. It turns out I am walking along a path that many others have been down before. So do you heed their warnings and quit whilst you're ahead? Or do you send it out to another specialist to look into it for you? Or do you decide to go it alone and load up that parts cannon one last time? Even though you know it won't be. And even if you do finally overcome the problem, you'll never forget the time, the money and the backbreaking work it took in order to get there. And suddenly that car you fell in love with all those months or years ago isn't really looking all that shiny anymore. Now I know what you're thinking, another video on motoring box about my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo's tail shaft. I know you're sick of it, so am I. But I'm trying to get to the bottom of it and hopefully we are getting closer. So today I've actually got the car up on jack stands and what we're going to do is we're going to run it up through the gears, get it up to 80 to 100, throw some cameras under there and just see what's going on with it. So I'm basically just trying to troubleshoot a few things I can here on the garage so I'm armed with a little bit of extra knowledge that I can tell the specialist tomorrow and then yeah hopefully they fix it. So let's chuck some cameras under there and see what happens. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through the gears. I do have traction control off and also have the rear wheels off too, just to sort of remove them from the, the equation. Let's start in a second. There we go. Nothing too serious so far. There's a little bit of throbbing going on at the moment, see around 50, that's where I experienced it last time. In the fifth. Well, over 60, it's vibrating quite hard now. Let's move into sixth gear. 75 is quite bad. And now like 85, it's getting really bad, so I don't really want to push it too hard. So, the footage from that test, it's a little bit inconclusive, but I did pick up a couple of things. I don't know if you spotted them in the video or not, but when you're cycling through the gears and through the speeds, the center bearing was definitely moving around a bit. You could see the shaft sort of going back and forth, and it was especially bad at certain RPMs. Even down at really low RPMs, it was kind of shuffling around a little bit. And the second one was, there was actually a bolt on the sort of flexible coupling that was the wrong way around. So in theory, the weight should be roughly the same, so that bolt maybe wouldn't have had much difference. Also, one more thing, I think this centre bearing wasn't actually torqued down properly. 
Uh, they had different spaces. There were previously some stock rubber spaces on that center bearing and I noticed they'd swapped them out for some metal ones which were like a lower profile and the bolts themselves were quite long so I have a feeling even though the bolts were done up tight the bolts may have been bottoming out in their holes and weren't allowing that center bearing to sort of be torqued up to the body properly so I put some smaller bolts in there and it's gotten rid of that really severe sort of thump 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 that was happening on the drive home from them last time. <sighs> so yeah, those couple of things don't instill me with a lot of confidence in what they're going to be doing today. But I do not have a choice at the moment. So we're going to drop this car off this morning. I'm taking every single back road I can find between here and there. So let's keep going. This is going to take a while guys. So I will catch up with you guys a bit later on. Oh, you're kidding. Fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. That was not a good move. <laughs> I do not come through here very often. I did not know that was uh, two lots of train lines there. That could have been bad at the wrong time. Jesus. Anytime you're feeling a little bit of sleep at the wheel, you just need to speed up above 60 and then... Oh yeah. Oh, okay, I'm awake. What a beautiful tour of Brisbane I'm on this morning. This is a Nala. It looks like it's hard rubbish curbside collection day. Because uh, we got mattresses, we got ovens, furniture, bags, sofas. Look at that. What a smorgasbord of delight. And we got birds. <laughs> I once had to get rid of an old Amart sofa. It was one of those leatherette ones and the surface or the material, like the leather finish, just totally disintegrated. So being the cheap person that I am, I, well, I also didn't have a car that could transport it. I actually destroyed it. I basically knocked it down into its core components, which were lots of bits of timber and foam and, and leatherette stuff. And I basically threw it out bit by bit in my wheelie bins until I got to a point where I was like, right, I'm sick of this. So I got online and I looked up what suburbs around me were doing their curbside pickup. And I found one, I think it was Bridgman Downs or something. So I loaded the remnants of that sofa up into the car and I just did a cruise down to that suburb late at night. Found a house that had a decent pile and I just added mine to it. How's that for ingenuity? <laughs> I felt really guilty though because the house itself was quite fancy and they just had a couple of neat things arranged at the curbside. They had an old TV, they had a couple of other things. They're all very neat. And then I just came along and just threw a whole big pile of sort of foam and leather and wood. And <laughs> so yeah, their, their neighbors probably would have been looking at them like going, you savages, you know. <laughs> that was quite a few years ago now. So we are nearing our destination. I need to get some fuel on the way, but I won't bother filming that. So I'll catch up with you guys, hopefully when we're picking this car up, fingers crossed. Right guys, we are back in the XR6 Turbo. I've just picked it up from uh, the specialist and they reckon they've fixed it. So according to their tech, uh, they took the shaft off, they split it into a front and rear half. They balanced each half, they put it back together, but crucially, they also replaced the rear CV, the sort of flexible coupling on that rear end of the towel shaft there. So they reckon that is what's fixed it. So far, I've only been able to get it up to 60, but it feels better already than what it was before, obviously. But right back in the start before this whole thing got underway, anyway, trying to fix it, it was only vibrating from 80 onwards. So that's really going to be the key. Does it still vibrate? When we get to 80, I'll have to wait and find out. Gee, it's still there a little bit, you know, but it's not much. I was thinking about this today, right? So long as they can get it 90 or 95% there, which I reckon they have. I'm gonna try find, there's these little clip-on tail shaft weights that sort of clip onto the bolts under the rear of the shaft and they're things that Ford used to sort of dynamically balance the tail shaft. So what I'll probably do is I'll go to a wrecker and I'll find some of those and then we'll put the car up on the stands again and then we can sort of clip the weight on uh, in one position, run the car up. Is it any better? If not, 
move it a little bit, run the car up again, and repeat until hopefully you can find a spot where it's just kind of smoothed everything out. It is kind of interesting too that why Ford even had to use those little clip-on weights in the first place. My car has never had them. But why did they need it? I guess they saw a, an issue, which is probably what I'm experiencing here, which is you've got a shaft which is balanced, but then when you put it on the car, there's still a vibration. So you need that final sort of level of adjustability, I guess. So yeah, that's uh, kind of interesting, guys. I'll sign off here. I reckon we've got this sorted. I'm gonna try and fix that last tiny little bit because I'm a perfectionist. I need my cars to be nice and smooth. I reckon we can finish it ourselves. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your patience on this journey. And uh, hopefully I'll have some good news for you in a future video. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.